Hello, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In today's video we will create this iPhone trailer in Apple style. Let's get started. Start by opening your Blender project. You can find the project files in the description. The product video consists of three shots. The first one will be a slow shot of the iPhone. It may help if you look at sample product videos to follow along with each scene. Switch to the animation tab and start moving and rotating the iPhone into position. Since the first scene is a close-up, I reduced the focal length to add more visual interest. Once you have everything in position, you can enable the auto key option in the animation controls. Each shot consists of 3 seconds. I set the animation to 30 frames per second and the animation timeline to 90 frames. Start by animating your camera path. In my case, I changed the keyframe type to linear to get a more static motion. I always play through the animation and move the keyframes around until I get the look I want. In my opinion there are two important keys in an animation like this. The first is the camera movement and the second key is the lighting. The goal is to create a visual harmony between camera movement and lighting. This way we get a tiny piece of light near the camera that makes the product visible. Add another area light to the scene. As you can see, I play around until I get something that looks right. Add another area light and adjust the size to get nice highlights. We will use this lamp to reveal highlights and reflections on the iPhone camera. I added two more area lamps to light the iPhone from the side. I animate these lamps in sync with the camera movement. Let's have final look before rendering. I decided to render the shots in a QuickTime movie format with a transparent background. Make sure you have FEMPIG selected as the file format. Select QuickTime as the encoding container and QT animation as the video codec and set the color mode to RGBA. Now you are ready to render your first scene. Please pay attention to the file names so that you don't accidentally overwrite your rendered animations. Let's continue with the second shot. First I delete all the lights in the scene and remove all the keyframes. It's the same procedure for the second shot. To keep things organized I create a new collection for my scene lighting. I disable film transparency to get better visual feedback of the scene. This shot will show the Apple logo of the iPhone. For this we need a soft area light from above. Turn your camera by 90 degrees and place it in position. Add an area light and scale it on the x-axis. I'm trying to figure out how to achieve the look I have in mind. I'm also thinking about camera movement and light movement to create an interesting shot.
I enable the composition guidelines to make sure the logo is in the center of my composition. But first I need to turn on my viewport overlay since they are not visible at the moment. Play with the timing until you get a satisfactory result. Don't forget to rename your output file and enable transparency in the movie section. Now you can render the second shot. The last scene will be the most difficult one. As you can see we switching from a slow camera motion to a faster and quicker motion. At the same time we are revealing the different colored iPhones. Delete your lights from your previous scene. Rotate your camera and the iPhone by minus 90 degrees. Start by animating the iPhone. In this kind of scenes I'm always thinking about the easing motion, timing and paste of the objects. To create a feeling of intensity I use the contrast of fast movements and slow movements. I always set my first frame and my last frame and animate my in-betweens. So I have a clear understanding of where I am starting and where I want to go with the animation. I set a keyframe at 60 frames and push it to the beginning. Thus, the animation starts at a fast pace and slows down. I lock all properties except the rotation in the object transforms. So that I can edit the rotation without affecting the location properties. In the first section of the upward movement I want to rotate the iPhone 360 degrees and turn on the display. When you animate this kind of rotation you should always consider the initial movement. The iPhone continues to rotate minimally and very slowly until it finally stops. Next, I add a simple studio light setup. This consists of a top light, front light and a light on the left and right side of the iPhone. I turn off the auto keyframe function so I don't accidentally set keyframes. Adjust the strength of the side and front lamps so that your model has enough lighting. Next, we animate the display. The display should light up during the first part of the rotation. For the texture of the display I used a mix RGB node, so I can control and animate the blend between texture and diffuse shader. Next I animate the camera movement. The camera moves in relation to the iPhone movement to create a unified and harmonious relationship between the two. Next, 
I duplicate the iPhone collection to create the different color types for the iPhone. Click on the collection and select duplicate collection. Select case side in the iPhone model outliner and duplicate the material. Now you can adjust the color for the iPhone. Do the same for the case back of the iPhone. After you have customized the materials, select all the parts of the iPhone and join them. You can do this in the viewport by selecting all the parts, right-clicking and selecting Join, or you can select your parts and press Ctrl-J. I want the iPhones from frame 40 to move to the side. In the Object Properties panel we can set a keyframe for the visibility of the model. Disable Viewport and Render under the Visibility tab. Go to frame 41 and enable them again. With a right click on the tabs you can set a keyframe. Then I adjust the scene a bit and try out different exposure intensities. Finally render the scene. After I got all of my scenes, I use After Effects for some post-processing. I use some slight color correction. To create even more contrast I made a change in the background. I use a text animation preset for the text. Add some music and the Apple logo to make it look more Apple-like. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can support this channel by liking the video and leaving a comment. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. See you next time.